I'm Boris Yatkin from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Today I'm going to be talking about large-scale enzyme function discovery, sequence similarity networks for the protein universe. And we define the protein universe as the 90 million proteins available in the widely used and universal protein universe uni resource Unipro. So today I'm going to talk about the sequence database problem with the explosion of protein sequences the database doubling time and consistent misannotations in protein databases, um, as well as sequence similarity networks and how they're going to solve the problem, and EFI, EST, our enzyme similarity tool, as well as EST-precompute, our database of computed sequence similarity networks on blue waters. So the personnel involved in this project are at the Carl R. Woese Institute for Genomic Biology at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. John Gerlt is the PI, Victor Jean Genil is the co-PI, Daniel Davidson, David Slater, and myself are programmers on this project. And we have external collaborators, Alex Bateman at EMBO EBI, and Matthew Jacobson at UCSF. So who are we? The Enzyme Function Initiative. We're a NIH, NIGMS supported large-scale collaborative project, websites enzymefunction.org. And so what do we do? We collaborate, create, and disseminate bioinformatics tools computational tools and experimental strategies for prediction and assignment of functions to uncharacterized enzymes discovered in genome projects. And we can contribute and correct annotations in protein databases. So as of March 2015, there are over 90 million proteins that have been identified, and that's a huge explosion of protein sequences. And since the number of protein sequences is exploding, this makes computation, annotation, and discovery difficult as the data sets are too large to manage with traditional methods. And half of our protein databases are poorly or incorrectly annotated. And protein databases are the resources that researchers turn to for information when they're solving biological problems. And there's a lot of uncharacterized enzymes to discover which have important applications to our world such as food, fuels, pharmaceuticals, biomedicine, factory chemicals, genome sequencing, you name it. There's a lot of applications. So how are we going to deal with this increasing size of the protein databases, the misinformation in these databases, and the huge numbers of undiscovered proteins? And also, how do we leverage the expertise of biologists to help us solve this problem? So our solution is a database of sequence similarity networks called EFI EST Precompute, and it's updated multiple times per year. And this database can only be calculated on blue waters. So NCSA's mission is to enable discovery by providing tools, resources, and support for the scientific community. And EFI's mission is to enable the discovery of functions of unknown enzymes in the protein universe, and also to provide a medium for the scientific community to collaborate with big data providers to map the protein universe. So the EFI Blue Waters Partnership is a model for NIH and NSF cooperation in meeting the challenges of big data in biology today. So if we wanted to generate this database on our cluster that we have available. We've got 20 uh, nodes in our cluster uh, on just our queue, and then there's another 20 shared nodes that the entire institute uses, versus we have access to over 22,000 nodes at Blue Waters. And our, the intermediary storage for our pipeline is around 100 terabytes, and there's only around 600 terabytes for the entire cluster, and we get 500 terabytes just for our project at Blue Waters. So if we wanted to make a comparison of 90 million protein sequences, that's over four quadrillion comparisons. And that would take eight months using the entire bio cluster, the entire production cluster. And we can do this in less than two weeks on Blue Waters. And we can create one of these databases in less than 200,000 node hours. So what is a sequence similarity network? Um, it's, uh, it's the way forward. It's what we think is going to be the bread and butter for the world of comparing large sets of proteins. And it's specifically, it's a node edge network where nodes are proteins and edges are a metric of protein similarity called the alignment score. And the alignment score is an integer that represents the degree of similarity between two proteins or nodes in this network. And a higher score implies a higher degree of similarity. And it's similar in magnitude to the E value when using the tool that many biologists are familiar with, BLAST. 
So when you use a sequence similarity network, you can choose the stringency um, of the network by choosing a higher alignment score or percent identity cutoff. And as you increase the stringency, you can help determine if proteins are isofunctional or whether or not, that means whether or not they could perform the same chemistry. And um, the clusters that don't meet the threshold are dropped. And so if you look here, as this, as the stringency is increased, we get to a cluster from, that starts as a hairball, that gets into something that's more discrete. And now these clusters contain highly related sequences, and you can experimentally validate the function of these sequences, and then transfer that information to the other proteins in that cluster, in that connected cluster. This is supposed to play. Uh, so basically, this is an animation of a hairball turning into a discrete set of clusters. Basically, it starts off at this as a, if you look at the bottom picture, there's a hairball and it's becoming more and more discrete. The image is not working. So once the clusters become more discrete, it's easier to form hypothesis about the protein's chemistry. And once we reach like a sweet spot with how much we uh, cluster them, then we get distinct clusters that perform, we can perform experiments on in silico, and then, then we can experimentally validate them in the lab. And so sequence similarity networks are qualitatively similar to phylogenetic trees, which are often used to uh, visualize groups of proteins, but they're a lot computationally faster to create. And there's multiple ways to analyze different groups of proteins, such as multiple sequence alignment phylogenetic trees and dendrograms and sequence similarity networks. And they each have their own pros and cons, and they each have their own place. So for visualizing small data sets, multiple sequence alignment and phylogenetic trees and sequence similarity networks are all pretty good. But once you start getting into the large data sets and looking at large numbers of proteins, it's not so good anymore. But sequence similarity networks are, are suited for that. So small data sets are, again, informative for multiple sequence alignment and phylogenetic trees, um, but large data sets are not. And that's where sequence similarity networks really shine. So in order to create multiple sequence alignments and phylogenetic trees, it's a high computational cost. Um, and phylogenetic trees require a sensitive multiple sequence alignment. However, sequence similarity networks do a pairwise sequence alignment, and they use blast heuristics to reduce the computational cost, so they're a lot less uh, costly to generate. And when a biologist is looking at a group of proteins, they want to see annotations to help them understand what's going on, get information about what's, what the proteins are in the clusters. And multiple sequence alignment and phylogenetic trees don't provide that. But sequence similarity networks, they provide 26 different types of annotations, such as where the protein comes from, what organism it, it's in, what it does, cross links to other databases, so it provides a, a rich amount of information. So we have sequence similarity network tools, the EFI EST tool, our enzyme similarity tool, and our EST pre-computed pre database of sequence similarity networks. So you can check out our EFI enzyme similarity tool at efi.igb.illinois.edu slash efi est. And so when you're using the tool, you can supply your uh, own favorite protein sequence to create sequence similarity networks for the protein's closest neighbors, or you can supply a database identifier and combine small proteins into protein families into larger protein families and generate networks for them. And we have over 4,000 jobs run on our the web tool as well as a large number of untracked jobs that are run directly on the cluster. So there are some caveats for our tool. There's, we, we have 100,000 sequence threshold for using predefined families, and it takes time. So these networks need to be generated, and it can take anywhere from a few hours to 48 hours, and then they're thrown away. But we want instant gratification. We want networks now, and that's why we got EST, EFI EST pre-compute. So it's our, it's our database of instantly accessible sequence similarity networks that we've calculated on Blue Waters. And it's also a hub for data analysis with a fast sequence similarity network filtering and graphical plots showing the distribution of data inside the networks. And we currently have a release 48 
available with over 99% coverage of uh, the PFAM families. And we have Interpro release 50 that's available, I mean, that's in progress. And we also want to use our allocation to generate more databases for uh, Gene3D, PFAM clans, Interpro families, so more databases of proteins to provide for the community. And it's available at efi.igb.illinois.edu slash est dash precompute. So what we provide is we provide full sequence similarity networks and representative sequence similarity networks. So in a full sequence similarity network, a node represents one protein sequence, but in representative sequence similarity networks, they provide each node represents more than one sequence. And the reason for this is we want to be able to fit these networks into a uh, cytoscape, into the c computer's memory. So basically different users have different system specs. So if they have a very weak computer, they want to use smaller networks. If you look in the size, smaller network is only 14 megabytes versus a full network is two gigabytes, which if you don't have enough RAM on your computer, you wouldn't be able to open up and visualize. So our, our enzyme similarity tools use the PFAM database, which is a widely used database around the world of conserved protein families that are based on a seed alignment of representative sequences and they're used to generate a profile hidden Markov model. And there's 14,831 families that are defined. You can see them, you can visit them at pfam.xfam.org. And so as a recent development, so our work with sequence similarity networks have caused these PFAM families to change. So we've collaborated with PFAM to increase the accuracy of, of these PFAMs for the next update. And PFAM uh, covers over 80% of the proteins in Uniprot, of the universal protein resource. And so it's really good coverage. So the doubling time of the Uniprot database is 18 months. And among that, uh, we've had other challenges, such as adapting the workflow and algorithms for these the sequence data sets getting bigger and bigger. And we've had to deal with major changes in the databases from which we get our data, which is what you usually expect in bioinformatics. And so the way that we've been dealing with the doubling time of the database is clustering highly similar sequences. So that has been our saving grace and saving us a lot of computation time. So what we do is uh, we, cl we cluster the sequences before we generate the scores. So the way that our workflow works is you choose a protein family, and then we extract the protein family sequence information and annotation information, and then we cluster them using the CD-HIT algorithm, and we're able to cluster them at 100% sequence identity over 100% sequence length, or we can use other cutoffs and they're less accurate to further reduce the computation time from clustering these sequences. So we cluster them, and then we're able to then generate alignment scores using BLAST. And um, another way that we can save CPU time is by reusing the BLAST calculations from previous databases. So we don't have to keep recalculating the entire database. And once we've generated these alignment scores, then we can calculate statistical plots and then actually generate the sequence similarity networks to be distributed to the user. So, We've successfully come up with ways to deal with the explosion of protein sequences in databases by developing EFI EST and providing EST pre-compute for anyone in the world to use. And so we've also provided a medium for biologists to collaborate with sequence database providers. And we've successfully developed algorithms to work with this increasingly, increasingly large data sets and within the confines of Blue Water's resources. And um, we've been able to generate over 14,000 PFAM family database networks and it's in less than 200,000 hours, which is a big improvement than when we first started a, a year ago. And we now have a production pipeline to, to generate these networks as the database gets updated. So we're pretty good shape. I wanna thank uh, the Blue Waters for their contributions. They've been very helpful in dealing with our issues, live, great live chat support, supplying job stats, optimizing the workflow, fixing software installations, you name it, they've been really helpful they have this great uh, single-threaded job scheduler that we've been using, and they've been a lot of help. Thank you for your time. Any more questions?
So the way that we normally have the workflow is we have it like generate job arrays and we don't use, uh, we don't have to talk with MPI. And so we were able to overcome that by using the scheduler X tool that we were provided. And, but it, ha it hasn't been too bad. It's been pretty good.